Well, vectors q1 to qn, and here there are column vectors, are orthonormal if their scalar product is zero when i and j here are different, and it is one when i is equal to j. This is indeed a scalar product. Huh? So you could rewrite this as scalar product of column i with column j okay so where i and j is different from zero well the vectors are orthogonal and when i is equal to j what you're kind of computing is the by doing this here is the length squared and this length squared is one so it means that they have unit length you can also write the matrix Q transpose Q. Q here is the matrix that you obtained with taking these column vectors and stacking them one to uh, next to the other. Okay, and when you produce Q transpose Q, well, you can write things like this. Okay, Q transpose in terms of the rows and the columns of Q transpose, and Q in terms of its columns and of course it will lead to a matrix where the ij element is simply the ith row of q transpose times the column j of q so if you're on the diagonal and i and j is equal this will produce ones over here okay and if you're on the off diagonals, i and j will be different and you'll produce zeros. So this will produce the identity matrix. So if you have vectors in a matrix that are orthonormal and the definition is given here, then Q transpose times Q is an identity uh, matrix. And of course, Q has dimension here m times n this one will have dimension n times m because we take the transpose so the product will be an identity matrix of dimension n so suppose that the matrix q has orthonormal columns okay so we can write q transpose q is the identity matrix well then this matrix q will leave the lengths unchanged this means that q x when you take the length of that will be equal to the length of x how can you see this well q x squared it's actually x transpose q okay times I need a transpose over here times qx this is the identity matrix so this is x transpose x so this is the length squared okay so this is how you see this and you can do something similar for the dot product okay so the dot product between this is x dot product with y and this is qx dot product with qy you can see that this dot product or scalar product is indeed preserved by the matrix q this means that the angle between vectors are the angles between vectors are preserved by the matrix q lengths are preserved and angles are preserved so when Q is a square matrix and you have Q transpose Q is equal to identity matrix. It means that Q transpose is equal to Q inverse. Okay, so transpose equals inverse. When Q is square, we talk about orthogonal matrices and the term orthonormal matrices is not used. So an orthogonal matrix is a square matrix with 
columns that are orthonormal. When Q is not square and you have the property Q transpose Q is the identity matrix, it means that Q transpose is the left inverse. And we like matrices with this property Q transpose Q is the identity because they are easy to work with. Well, let's have a look at what would happen if A was indeed a orthogonal matrix. Okay, and then remember then we would have Q transpose Q is the identity matrix. And let us assume that A is equal to an orthogonal matrix over here and if we plug that in in the least square solution well we end up with something that is very simple and in the projection matrix we simply obtain q times q transpose okay so you see that things simplify well in general you never have this property or very seldomly but what we'll do is decompose a using q times r and q is an orthogonal matrix and the r matrix here will be upper triangular and this will also lead to some simplifications well let us take a few example of matrices that are orthogonal and a first example is the rotation matrix okay which uh, rotates every vector in the plane clockwise by the angle theta okay so here we work work in r2 and when you do a rotation you know that the length is preserved and if you rotate two vectors by both by the angle theta the angle is preserved so you know that this matrix must be orthogonal and therefore q transpose must be equal to q minus 1. You can have q minus 1 simply by taking the transpose of uh, this one. So this is the inverse transformation. So it's rotating the vectors by minus theta. Okay, and the corresponding underlying matrix q minus 1 is obtained by taking this one and taking the transpose this is simply because this matrix is orthogonal well there is a matrix that we have encountered before which is the permutation matrix okay which is also orthogonal and permutation matrices have the same rows as the identity matrix but in a different order so obviously the columns of such matrix will have a unit length okay but we had shown also that permutation matrices uh, which are the product of elementary permutation matrices have this property that p transpose is equal to p minus one so they are orthogonal matrices Well, next example is a reflection matrix and the reflection matrix is constructed from a unit vector u. This means that u transpose u is equal to 1. And this matrix over here, constructed from the identity matrix minus 2 times u times u transpose. And this is different from 1. This is a matrix. This is a scalar produces a reflection matrix and the idea is that if u is this vector over here you take the perpendicular and this reflection matrix will do reflection across this line over here so for instance this point will be reflected on the other side of the line this is the reflection matrix this matrix is a bit particular in the sense that it is symmetric so this means that q transpose is equal to q and it is orthogonal so q transpose is equal to q minus 1 so you have that q transpose is equal to q is equal to q minus 1 okay so we have also that squaring this reflection matrix 
well, we can kind of see what will happen. You apply a reflection and then you apply it again. Well, it should produce you the identity matrix. And using these properties, indeed, you will see that this is, is the case. Okay, so Q square is Q times Q, but Q is equal to its inverse. So it's also equal to Q minus one Q and it's the identity matrix. So how can we show that the matrix, uh, sorry, the matrix is symmetric? Well, we construct Q transpose. So we have to take the transpose of this one. Transpose of the identity matrix is the identity matrix. And so we have to take the transpose of this one. Remember here that AB transpose is equal to B transpose A. So indeed, we find this thing, which is again Q. Let's now write Q transpose Q. So it's simply, we have shown that Q transpose is equal to Q. So we can simply write 1 minus 2 times u, u transpose. It's not a 1 over here, it's an identity matrix times the identity matrix minus 2 times u, u transpose. We distribute things and we end up with this equation over here. And what you have over here is a scalar one okay so this and this cancels out so indeed q transpose q is the identity matrix and we have shown that it is orthogonal here we have shown that it is symmetric okay let us take an example with u this vector over here so it's indeed a unit vector it points in this direction so the reflection matrix will reflect across a 45 degree line okay so you can construct the matrix identity matrix my, minus two times this vector times the vector transpose and if you do the calculations you'll end up with this uh, matrix here which is orthogonal okay and you see indeed that if you take an example two one well will be mirrored to one two on the other side of this dashed line you can also see that this is a permutation matrix well in this slide we introduce the graham schmidt procedure and well we use this procedure to produce orthonormal vectors qi from independent vectors ai well may, they might be for instance the columns of a matrix a and this graham schmidt procedure lies at the basis of the a is equal to q r decomposition where q is orthogonal and r is upper triangular okay so how do we start well we start by keeping the first vector okay so how do we obtain the second vector a2 bar well we take the the original second vector a2 and we remove its projection onto the previous vector a1 bar okay so what you see over here is the projection of a2 on a1 bar let's have a look on the next slide so what you see over here are the two original vectors so you have a1 a2 yeah, here in blue we keep the first vector so a1 bar is simply the first vector and how do we obtain a2 bar well we project a2 on a1 so this gives me the projection of a2 on a1 bar right and if you subtract this projection from a2 you obtain a2 bar so a2 bar is a2 minus the projection of 
a2 on a1 bar, the previous vector. Well, how do we continue? We've started from a1, a2, and we have produced a1 bar, a2 bar, and we proceed with the next vector. Okay, so a3 in general will not be orthogonal to a1 bar, a2 bar. But what we can do is project a3 on the previous vectors, a1 bar, a2 bar, this leads to this vector over here. And if we remove this vector from A3, okay, we obtain A3 bar, and A3 bar is orthogonal to both A1 bar and A2 bar. So we have now, uh, let's assume that we had three columns in the matrix. We have now produced three vectors a1 bar a2 bar and a3 bar that are orthogonal we still have to make them orthonormal and this is simply done by dividing by their respective lengths over here okay and you obtain q1 q2 and q3 well using this graphical example we can kind of finish the graham schmidt procedure so remember that we are keeping the first vector okay so the first vector that we have obtained is a1 bar is simply a1 a2 bar we obtain by taking a2 and subtracting its projection on a1 bar okay so for the next vectors ai we have to take a i and subtract all the projections on the vectors that have been set previously okay so if we take a 3 it means that a 3 bar is a 3 minus the projection of a 3 on a 1 bar minus the projection of a3 on a2 bar okay and we have a3 bar so we continue until we have covered all the columns of the matrix a we end up with a bunch of vectors ai bar that are orthogonal and we can make them autonormal simply by dividing by the length well let us take an example so we have three vectors here that are the columns of a matrix a and these vectors are independent this is something that you should check so the procedure says that the first vector a1 bar it's simply the first vector okay so this is kind of easy the second one okay remember that these vectors a1 bar a2 bar and a3 bar will be orthogonal to one another not yet autonormal so we have found the first one the second one is constructed from a2 and you have to subtract the projection of a2 on a1 bar okay this is the projection this is something that you should be able to reconstruct yourself we have done this previously in the course this scalar product of a1 bar by itself will give a 2 the scalar product of this one and this one will give me also 2 so this is simply a2 minus a1 bar and this produces this vector over here so we have two vectors that are perpendicular now we need to construct the third one so you start from a3 you remove its projection on a1 bar you remove its projection from on sorry uh, a2 bar and you will end up with a3 bar so the scalar product of this one and this one will give me a 6 this one we have already computed it's 2 okay so it will give me a 3 minus 
3 times A1 bar. The scalar products of uh, this one over here and this one will give me minus 6, but minus time minus minus 6 will give me plus 6 over here. And the length squared of this one is 6. Okay, so it's plus A2 bar. And if you do this computation, you will see that this is A3 bar. And we have now three vectors that are orthogonal. If we divide by the length, well, we obtain three vectors, Q1, Q2, Q3, that are autonormal, and they have been constructed from the original vectors A1 to A3. Okay, so here we would like to write A in terms of Q and we'll need a matrix R that links A and Q. So we'll write A is equal to QR. So of course we are interested in R here. So we can pre-multiply by Q transpose and we'll obtain here Q transpose QR. This is the identity matrix. So we know that R is Q transpose A, this is what is written over here. Okay, so we can write Q in terms of, well, the rows of Q transpose, uh, which are the vectors that we have produced transpose. And we can continue up to n here. So this is my Q transpose. And here we take the columns of A. First column. Uh, we'll not write all of them and just write the last one. The end column. Right, and this is A. So we can now see that element I, J will be a row times a column. So it will give me something like that, okay? So this is this matrix here. And we can see that this matrix is upper triangular. So R, uh, this is R here, is upper triangular because this element here is zero when i is larger than j okay so how can we see this so maybe we can go to what we had shown over here and we here we can see indeed that q3 scalar product with a1 is equal to zero so q three scalar product with a two is equal to zero. We so also can also see that Q two scalar product with a one is equal to zero. So we can write that QI scalar product with a j is equal to zero when i is larger than j. Well, if we start from a matrix A, which has columns which are independent, the Graham-Schmidt procedure can construct orthonormal vectors Q1 to Qn. So this leads to the so-called QR decomposition, where the matrix Q has columns Q1 to Qn, and R is constructed like this and it is upper triangular by construction. Well, let us look at an example. This is the matrix A that we had used in the Graham-Smith procedure, and here are the columns Q1, Q2, up to Q3, okay? And we had seen that A is equal to QR, so, Q transpose A is Q transpose QR 
identity matrix over here so r is equal to q transpose a so maybe the easiest way so that you don't have to know anything you can find everything back right is to write q transpose and it's one over square root of two minus one over square root of two zero one over square root of six one over square root of six minus two over square root of six one over square root of three and i'll continue here so this is q transpose and now we can put a right next to it a one two three minus one zero minus three zero minus two and three and now you can start to do the multiplications right so for instance this element over here it's this line times this column okay so this will produce 2 over square root of 2 and this is indeed square root of 2 so you can continue with all the elements and what I would do is not directly say that this element is 0 and directly say this is element 0 and 0 over here but check if this is indeed the case okay so for instance this element should be zero is this the case well we take the third line times the first column and you indeed see that you produce a zero if somehow you have made a mistake in the computation of q3 q2 or q1 you will see directly by doing this multiplication that if you have something that is different there okay you have made a mistake in the computation of q okay so this is a way of checking your result well suppose that we have decomposed a matrix that is m by n into q times r then the formulas of the least square solution they simplify this is the solution of the least square solutions in terms of a and if you inject things well a transpose will produce this so this is a transpose this is a right so this is the identity matrix so what is left here is r transpose r inverse but this is equal to and now you have to remember that a b inverse is equal to b inverse a inverse so this produces r minus one and the transpose of r inverse okay so this one and this one will cancel out and what will remain is this quantity over here okay you can do something similar for the projection uh, uh, matrix the projection matrix well what you have to do is take a times x okay so a is qr you inject the x hat in here and what you obtain is that p is equal to q times q transpose b so this must be the projection matrix okay this is an interesting result because if you multiply by r on both sides you obtain this thing over here so this means that if somehow you have decomposed a into qr up front and you want to solve ax equals b and, and that's uh, a least squares problem um, because there is no solution for instance there are more equations than variables you can transform it into this problem over here r is upper triangular so this is my r here this is my x hat and q transpose b will be a vector okay so everything is well organized so that you can use back substitution 
to obtain the least squares estimate. So this is something I want to stress. So if you have a problem of the type AX equals B, right? And you have M that is a lot larger than N. So it's a least squares problem. And it's a problem of the type where A is always the same, okay? And B is changing all the time. So then you have the advantage of doing the QR decomposition once, okay, and writing the system like this, okay, remember this R is upper triangular and then you can use back substitution. Then the most efficient thing to do in this way is to do the QR decomposition once. Huh? Remember that we make the assumption that A is always staying the same in these problems and that B is changing. And then once you have got it in this way, well, you only have for each B here to recompute this vector over here. And we you can use this system of equation in which R is upper triangular and use back substitution. Okay, this is the least squares problem that we had obtained when fitting a line through the points 0, 6, 1, 0, and 2, 0. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, you find them over here and 600 zero, zero, you'll find them over here so suppose now the problem is not this one but that we want to solve the problem in general right so we always have the same times that are being considered one and two but the tests well they give you always another result huh? let's call it b1 b2 b3 okay well you wouldn't end up with the same matrix a over here okay the variables of course are the same because you're fitting a line and what would be different is that this one would become b1 b2 b3 so this is indeed then a problem where you solve always the same least squares from ax is equal to b with always the same a matrix but with a different p then it makes sense to compute the qr decomposition of a so how do we do that remember we keep the first column of a so a1 bar is equal to a1 and a2 bar is a2 and you subtract the projection the projection of a2 on a1 bar okay so this is this quantity over here so if you make the scalar product of this one and this one you obtain a3 right and this one here is the length squared of this one and it's a 3 also so you end up with a2 minus a1 bar and this is then a2 bar we have constructed two vectors that are perpendicular okay orthogonal but they are not yet orthonormal so we have to divide by their respective lengths and now we have q1 and q2 q we can already say well it's q1 and you stack q2 just next to it so this is my q matrix okay so we had started from the matrix a we had already obtained our q matrix over here okay it was obtained using the Grimm-Schmidt procedure and we know that R 
is equal to Q transpose A. So I think it's easier to do it like this. So if you transpose Q, you obtain this. And then minus 1 over square root of 2, 0 and 1 over square root of 2. And you put 1, sorry, A just next to it. Q transpose over here, and this is A. 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 2. And now we can start multiplying. Okay, so the first element is 3 over square root of 3, so this is indeed correct. Again, 3 over square root of 3. This one will be 2 over square root of 2 it's correct also and we can check if the last one is giving us 0 and this is indeed the case so this is the R matrix that we have now computed so we can now have a look at the least squares problem you should be able to find that x hat it's a transpose a minus 1 times a transpose b and if you plug in a is equal to qr you'll end up with x is equal to r minus 1 q transpose b and this thing you can rewrite like this okay we had obtained our matrix r and our matrix Q transpose over here and we take the B that we had in our uh, fitting a straight line through three points we obtain a vector over here right it's a two by two uh, problem and we can easily obtain C and D the advantage of having used the QR decomposition is that it is now very easy to solve another problem where we go through the points 0, B1, 1, B2, and 2, B3, right? We just replace this vector by the vector B1, B2, and B3. And you obtain directly a system that is in a nice form because here you have an upper triangular matrix and you can do back substitution well well let's do an exercise and here you have a matrix a and the idea is to do the qr decomposition so we'll do first the graham schmidt procedure to obtain q remember that we have to select the first column so this is simple we keep this one okay so the next vector a2 bar by construction will be perpendicular to a1 bar it's simply a21 a2 sorry minus its projection on a1 bar okay so it's a2 minus a1 bar transpose a2 over a1 bar transpose a1 bar times a1 bar so it is equal to 1 2 2 this is simply a the second column over here minus okay so a1 bar scalar product with a2 this will produce a5 over here and this one is the length square so it's uh, 3 so it's minus, minus 5 thirds of 1 1 1 and this leads to minus 2 thirds 1 third and 1 third and this is equal to a2 bar Okay, so this is A1 bar. And now, 
a3 bar well we start from a3 we remove its projection on a3 so it's a1 bar transpose a3 divided by a1 bar transpose a1 bar times a1 bar and then a2 bar transposed a3 a2 bar transpose a2 bar and then a2 bar over here well this one here will give me the scalar product of a1 bar and a3 so this is minus one over here minus one this one we already know it's a three this one here a2 bar we've got it and we multiply by the third column and this will give me two thirds and then we have to take the length square of a2 bar so this is 6 over 9 okay but 6 over 9 this is also 2 thirds so we have that a3 bar is minus 1 third a1 bar minus a2 bar okay so there's no bar over here so we've got a3 so this is minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 third and a1 bar it's 1 1 1 and then minus minus 2 thirds 1 third and one third and if you do the calculations you end up with a zero over here a one over here well it's a minus one over here with a minus one over here so it's a plus over here so it's a plus over here and now it will be correct so it will give me a 1 over here and a minus 1 over here so this is a 3 bar so now we need to construct q1 well q1 is very simple it's 1 over the square root of 3 that's the length of the vector times 1 1 1 okay q2 it looks like it's difficult to obtain but in order to take uh, to divide the length it's easier to first multiply by 3 okay and then you have a vector which is minus 2 1 1 and then say well i will divide by this length so the idea is to obtain here a unit vector so the length of this one is square root of 6 so we'll have 1 over square root of 6 minus 2 1 1 and this is easy to obtain so q3 is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 0 1 minus 1 okay so we can now construct our q matrix and this is simply 1 over square root of 3 1 over square root of 3 square root of 3 here we have minus 2 square root of 6 1 over the square root of 6 and 1 over the square root of 6 and here is 0 1 over the square root of 2 and minus 1 over the square root of 2 so we know that a is equal to q times r 
So Q transpose A is equal to Q transpose Q R, which is equal to R. So R is equal to Q transpose A. So we'll write it over here. 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3, minus 2 over square root of 6, 1 over square root of 6, 1 over square root of 6, 0, 1 over square root of 2, and minus 1 over the square root of 2, multiplied by A. So we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and minus 1, 1, minus 1. This will yield. So, first row, first column, 3 over the square root of 3, so that's the square root of 3. F next one, 5 over the square root of 3, so it's 5 square root of 3 divided by 3. And the next one is minus 1 over the square root of 3, so minus square root of 3 over 3. Next one should be 0, so you should check. Second line, first column, this is indeed a 0. We can already check with the third uh, row. Times first column is a 0, and times the second column is also a 0. So we expect the Q matrix to be correct so second line second column it's 2 over the square root of 6 so 2 square root of 6 divided by 6 we have the same thing over here and we'll have 2 over the square root of 2 so it's square root of 2 and this is our our matrix over here and we have done our QR decomposition what you could do of course is to multiply Q and R and it is obvious that you should obtain the A matrix